Welcome to a layout tutorial for the basic closest tiling pattern of the classic rosettes. This layout video will deal with only the layout and then in an extended text discussion on the website we'll go through converting this to the final rosette patterns. Everything starts with a blank piece of paper and what we'll do here is take this from a um, a line, a two-fold divided circle, four-fold divided circle, to the eight-fold divided circle, and finally to the 16-fold divided circle. And then we'll add the basic proportioning circles for the eight-fold rosette. And actually, it can be used for other patterns. And you'll see me initially marking many of these points with a marking needle, a protracting needle. This is because I can't get close to my drawing and stay out of the way of the camera. But this is generally very useful for maintaining accuracy in any kind of drawing. And I'll also be using beam compass here. This is an A, a, a roughly equivalent to an A3 sheet. This is a double letter uh, American sheet. And uh, the radius on this is irrelevant. Uh, you're putting the largest circle that you can fit on your paper because we're going to construct everything including the perpendicular that we're going to raise to the center of the circle in a minute inside the circle. So fill the page, create your circle, and then we will have our first divided circle. This is the twofold divided circle. It creates two new points where the line intersects the circle. These are going to be compass centers, so I'm going to I'm eventually going to edit out all of these point markings because it's pretty irritating to watch. But we'll mark these new compass centers. And then we're also going to create two new intersections on the line to create the perpendicular so that we can keep the perpendicular inside the circle. The diameter of this circle is irrelevant exactly, but you want it to be a little bit less or a little bit more than half of the original circle. You don't want it to be exactly half because then these marks might get in the way of other later construction elements. But we mark those and then we'll go back to our compass to start our division markings of the circle. And I'm going to include um, some markings in the circle which are not technically required for the 4, 8, 16 sequence um, so that we can see the relationship of this layout to the later layouts. This marking is not technically required, but it's to keep you oriented to where this arc comes from. It comes from the vertical below the point across to the circle. Later, we're going to extend that arc into the circle. But to keep things tidy, we're just marking what we need in this layout. The vertical above and below, and uh, these, these marks on the circle to keep you oriented to what's going on. And then these two marks in the center can be used with the same compass opening to erect the perpendicular bisector across the center of the circle. This method keeps everything inside the circle. And then when we extend the line through these two crossings, we will have our fourfold divided circle. So we'll get to watch a couple more points marked. It's particularly important early in the construction of the layout to get everything nice and tightly defined so that your symmetry in your later layout looks good. You can use loosely drawn uh, layouts and you'll find that many of the, especially manuscript illuminations, many of the painted ceilings are relatively loosely drawn. In this case, this course was about the exact structure of the rosettes, how things interact, how points are defined. So. I got a little obsessive about accuracy in the layout. You decide in your final artwork how accurate things need to be. But in much of this art, much of the beauty 
of the final structure is in symmetry. Symmetry comes from having exact, well-constructed fundamentals for the layout. So in this case, we use this line exactly as we used the original horizontal line. And we've got our arcs defining the corners. These are going to be for the eightfold division, these marks in the corner. Same divisions on both sides. And then the corners were marked, and we extend our eightfold division through the circle. I think there's a double speed playback somewhere on YouTube if you find this boring. And then we'll get to the uh, really interesting part at the end where the proportioning circles are defined. But there are always questions from students about how is the fundamental layout constructed? What's the best way to put it together? So we're going through the whole thing here. And here we're going to have our eightfold divided circle. And I'm marking the corners because we're not going to use them again in this layout, but I'm marking the corners so that if I have some problem, I can go back and look at those corner marks and see if I can identify where a problem is. And I might be able to fix the layout by just erasing one line um, and repairing it. You don't technically need to mark anything outside the circle for this layout. And if you're just here for the rosette, Proportioning circle construction, you can skip down to 18 and a half minutes or so and save yourself some time and then pick up the proportioning circle construction at that point. To move from the eightfold to the 16 fold, we're going to use this square construction inside the circle. These are not going to be part of our final layout. They won't be used in the final layout of the rosette or the pattern. They're used in the 16-fold division. And then at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our compass. I forgot to mention at the beginning that you're going to set your compass once and you're not going to change it until we're completely done. We're going back to our original compass setting and now we're going to take those original arcs, which started all the way out at the vertical, mark them where they cross the circle, and we're going to mark where they cross this square from each of the four points. These are nice 90 degree crossings of a radius marking across the square. And these are going to give us our 16 degree, sorry, our 16 divisions of the circle. And it's fairly easy to prove why this works. Uh, we won't get into that here. But if you want to think about this, you can look at what you're doing. You're marking a radius on the square. And there's, of course, a radius to the center of the circle. And if you think about it, it's not too hard to see how you can prove that what we're doing here is a 16-fold division. It's essentially done by uh, a triangle with one known angle and two known equal sides. Pretty simple geometry. And then these are extended across through the center. 
you need to look at the center for two reasons to make sure that your lines are going where they're supposed to go, that they're going through the center. And it also, in complex layouts, it keeps you from connecting the wrong two points. But there are now eight of these to construct, and then we'll have our completed division. There's our 16-fold division, and we're now going to mark out the square, which is actually going to be our pattern square. At each of these four corners of this square, it's going to be a rosette center or other pattern center if you're using this for some other pattern. And this is the final boundary of our five center unit, which we used in our course to discuss all of the rosettes. This is going to change as the symmetry changes, changes shape to a rectangle, two different rectangles in the 10 and the 12. In this case, it's a perfect square. So with our perfectly divided pattern field, we need to divide the corners. And one very useful fact to know is that if you have a center a circle on the outside circle, it will have the same it will share the same divisions as this outside circle. So we can use this top division to draw one of the divisions of the corner circle. And then if we go to every second division around the circle, we could completely divide that corner. We're only going to divide part of it here because only part of it is used in the construction of the rosette. Um, you can use this to completely divide. You can use this layout to completely divide those circles so that you could draw the complete rosette in each corner. You would not use this position if you wanted to do that. Well, what we're drawing is we're drawing these interradii. These are the radii which do not have a petal on them and where they intersect the center divisions we stop that intersection is actually what we're doing in the center is we're defining an octagon so we're defining an octagon side in each corner and an octagon side in the center and if you read Jay Bonner's book or look at some of the constructions you'll see online you'll see this described as a polygon in contact layout method. We're using the same method, although we're not in normal circumstances. We don't draw the polygons. We discuss them in our course. So what you're doing right now is you're identifying those shared signs. And then we'll see in a minute that our smallest unit cell, which contains only the center rosette, will go through these intersection points. The smallest unit cell for this pattern is a square.
So here we have all of the intersections and the divisions defined, and now we're going to draw the sides of a unit cell for the center rosette. And it goes through those intersections of the interradii. It also intersects these points on the square. So you're going to have a square sitting on its points upright in the center, the unit cell, and the larger pattern is going to be a circle, sorry, a square in repose inside the circle. So we'll draw on our four sides. In the later patterns, I'll skip through a lot of this and save a lot of time, but due to the many questions over the years about specifics, I'm going through all the steps on this one. So four sides of our unit cell, and if everything's working out well, all of these unit cell lines should pass through those intersections. And those intersections are very important. They're going to be critical to defining how we set up the rosette symmetry. So there we go, four corners divided into 16 divisions and the unit cell in the center. And I'm going to switch to ink here. I'm going to darken in the outside of our pattern border. Since we have three circles, I'm gonna darken in the one which actually defines our pattern here in ink. And then I'm going to switch to ink for a little bit better contrast in the proportioning circles so that they'll stand out against the pencil lines. It's obvious why I didn't do the whole thing in ink. Inking is slow. So at this point, this is our critical proportioning circle. This circle is placed at one of those intersections and the radius goes along the side of the unit cell to the corner to corner division, which is going to define on that division will be an arm of the rosette. The circle, so this circle should be tangent to the three sides of the triangle it sits in actually also tangent to one of our original setup circles but it should be tangent to the three sides that it sits in the next circle is the circle which will define the inside star polygon of the rosette this is a, a critical proportion it's univer almost universally observed in rosette patterns from their original appearance uh, almost a thousand years ago in the eastern lands of the Islamic empires. Almost universally observed right down to the present. There are, of course, exceptions in some uh, national traditions, and there are some exceptions where people have just used other proportions for patterns, but they're actually quite rare. You'll find that the vast majority will obey these proportions. And at this point, you're going to want to go to the discussion on the web page to see what we're doing here and how we're going to use these circles as we are almost completely through the layout one more set of circles
The last circle will be the limiting circle around the rosette, and it simply goes to the edge of the inside square tile and the limiting polygon of the center. So either you can view that as the octagon or the square. In this case, since we've drawn the square, we're, we're calling it square. So we set that radius. And in all of these cases, it's good to check from one an outside corner to make sure that you set your radius correctly. They should meet on that line. So this will be the outside limit of the rosette. And I'm carrying these around all the way to the circle for reasons which are discussed in the text discussion on the website. You don't technically need those out there, but I find them useful in a few instances, particularly in the uh, 10 and the 12 fold examples. They're not incredibly important in this eight fold example. So we have a complete layout. And now you can practice a couple get a layout you're happy with, and move on to the description of the website to carry this on to the rosette. Have fun.